Hi, welcome back. In the last class, I was dealing with uh, important topic pumps, wherein I explained the different classification of pumps the and their working principles and also their advantages, disadvantages and application. Now, in today's class, I am going to solve certain numerical problems on this topic. So, today's topic is problem on pumps, numerical problems. The problem statement is, a pump running at 1500 rpm has a displacement of 60 centimeter cube per revolution. What is the theoretical flow rate? So, this is the statement of the problem. We are going to solve this on the board. Please follow me. So, let us solve this problem step by step. First, let, let us make the list of given parameters. So, given is simply a pump he has not mentioned the type. So, the given data is speed, speed is 1500 rpm and along with that he has given the displacement volume as 60 centimeter cube per revolution. And he asks us to find theoretical discharge. So, this is the given parameters we have to find out the theoretical discharge. We know that for any pump, the theoretical discharge Qt is given by the product of displacement into n divided by 1000 and the units will be liters per minute. So, this is the governing equation. So, using this equation you have to solve. So, substitute the variables V p is how much? 60 centimeter cube per revolution, speed is 1500 rpm divided by 1000. Now, if you get this in as if you simplify this, you will get the answer as 90 liters per minute. So, the pump discharge 90 liters per minute. So, in one minute it gives the output of 90 liters. So, this is the statement of the problem. So, we move on to the next problem. The problem statement is like this. An external gear pump as 125 millimeter outside diameter, 85 millimeter inside diameter and 40 mm width. These are the gear dimensions. For a pump speed of 1500 rpm, determine the theoretical volumetric displacement and theoretical flow rate. If the volumetric efficiency is 90 percent, what is the actual flow rate? So, this is problem related to gear pump. Let us solve this problem on the board. Problem. This problem is related to gears. So, let us write down the given. So, given is the gear pump. Always make a note of the configuration. Next, it says you can draw a line diagram like this. So, line diagram is very important. This is the casing. So, this is the casing. Okay. Now, these are the two external gears, right. So, he says this is the inner diameter. So, let me designate that as out. Both are identical. This is the outer diameter. Let me write. So, the width of the gear the width of the gear 
w right so let us make a list of all the parameters so the inside diameter of the gear is 85 millimeter 85 millimeter which is equal to 8.5 centimeter the outside diameter is 125 outside diameter is 125 i have marked all these dimension on the diagram so 12.5 centimeter the width of the gear both are identical gears the width of the gear is equal to 40 millimeter so i will designate that as w 40 millimeter so that is equal to 4 centimeter so volumetric efficiency is 90 percent volumetric efficiency is 90 percent now we are supposed to find out the volume displaced the theoretical and actual discharges all these parameters we need to find out now for a gear pump we know that volumetric displacement is given by for gear pump volumetric displacement is given by V P is equal to pi by 4 pi by 4 d out square d in square and the whole thing multiplied by w right so we get it in respective units so please multiply pi by 4 into 12 12.5 12.5 12.5 square minus 8.5 square into 4 so if you simplify this 264 centimeter cube per revolution this is the answer because i have kept it in centimeter you can have it in meter also so you get vp is equal to 2.0 now how to find out theoretical discharge theoretical discharge theoretical discharge for gape pump qt theoretical discharge for dwm equal to equal to a product of displacement into n divided by 1000 the units will be in liter per minute liter per minute so this will be in centimeter cube per revolution so substitute the value vp is equal to this much 264 into rpm is what is the rpm given the rpm given is uh, 1500 rpm so if this rotates in uh, clockwise this uh, anti clockwise so also speed is 1500 rpm so 1500 divided by 1000 so you simplify you will get 396 liter per minute so q is equal to 396 liters per minutes so vp is answers you can write down the answer somewhere answer vp is 264 centimeter cube per revolution qt is 
396 L P M. Now, the actual discharge, actual discharge, how to find out the actual discharge? Actual discharge for this pump. actual discharge for the pump. So, you can find out the actual dis discharge for the pump. You can find out the actual discharge. To find out the actual discharge, to find actual discharge, we know that volumetric efficiency is equal to Q actual by Q theoretical whole thing multiplied by 100. So, in this case volumetric efficiency is 90 percent, Q actual is how much? You have to find out and uh, Q theoretical is 396 liters per minute. So, cross multiply Q actual is equal to you get 356 liter per minute. So, the answer is Q actual is 356 liter per minute. So, there is some guidelines, we have to draw the diagram, put the given values, find out the formulas, substitute the formulas and finally, tabulate the answers. This is the step by step method. So, we will continue to the next problem, that is the third problem. It is related to vane pump. The statement of the problem is like this. The rotor and the cam ring diameter in a wear pump are 80 centimeter, 12 centimeter respectively. If the vane width is 5 centimeter and the eccentricity is 1.2 centimeters, full stop, determine the volumetric displacement. Okay. So, let us solve this problem on the board. Given is vane pump, so vane pump as it is, it is having a cam ring, eccentricity located is the rotor. So, this is the cam center and this is the rotor center and uh, this is the inlet. and this is the outlet, right. So, inlet, outlet and uh, this is the rotor, right. So, the given dimensions according to the statement of the problem, diameter of the rotor, diameter of the rotor is equal to 8 centimeter. So, this is the rotor. So, diameter of the rotor is equal to 8 centimeter, right. Diameter of the cam ring, so diameter of the cam ring, so this is the diameter of the cam ring. Diameter of the cam ring is 12 centimeter, so 12 centimeter, so DC is equal to 12 centimeter. The width of the rotor is the width of the the vane width sorry the vane width the veins. So, here veins are connected like this. So, so if I take the vane like this, so this is width. So, width of the vane is equal to 
5 centimeter width of the vein is equal to 5 centimeter also he has given eccentricity eccentricity is the distance between or the offset between the cam center and the uh, rotor center so, right i will designate that as e so e is equal to 1.2 centimeter so e is equal to 1.2 centimeter right so we are going we are supposed to find the displacement volume displacement volume for the gear pump so for game gear pump the volumetric displacement for vein pump the volumetric displacement is given by is given by v p is equal to pi by 2 d cam plus d rotor d cam plus d rotor multiplied by eccentricity into l right so you can substitute pi by 2 8 plus 12, 12 plus 8, eccentricity is 1.2 and length I just I migrate I will I will put this as width w w e into w or to see just to remember this uh, let us make v v is easy to remember so w into e so w width is how much 5 centimeter 5 centimeter into eccentricity is 1.2 centimeter right so after calculating this i get the displacement as 0 0.19 liters the volume displaced by this vein pump is 0 0.9 liters okay so let us move on to this next problem let us move on to the next interesting problem what is the fourth problem it is related to vein pump a vein pump is to have a volumetric displacement of 82 centimeter cube full stop it has a rotor diameter of 5 centimeter comma a cam ring diameter of 7.5 centimeter and a vein width of 4 centimeter full stop what must be the eccentricity full stop what is the maximum volume dis volumetric displacement possible this appeared in one of the vtu question paper so let us try to solve this problem on the board given is a vein pump as I told that vein pump consists of a cam ring a rotor both are at an eccentricity this is the diameter of the rotor this is the diameter of the cam ring so this is the inlet this is the outlet right so a simple line diagram will define this vein pump configuration right so let us identify the given parameters so given parameters are volumetric displacement vp is equal to 82 centimeter cube you can put that into 82 into 10 to the power of minus 3 millimeter cube plus 3 sorry meter means plus 3 
So, this is the volumetric displacement. He has given the diameter of the rotor as 5 centimeter that is equal to 50 millimeter. The diameter of the cam 7.5 centimeter that is equal to 75 millimeter. Length is equal to for width is width, I will put that as w, width is equal to 4 centimeter or 40 mm, 40 mm. Eccentricity we have to find out. Also, what he wants is the maximum displacement, volumetric displacement for this eccentricity, that is, I will put that as Vp max. So, these are all we need to find out one by one. So, we know that how to find out eccentricity. Eccentricity is given by E is equal to E is equal to the actual displacement by the volumetric displacement, right. So, V p by pi by 2 d c plus d r into V. So, this is eccentricity, right. So, you can substitute the variable V p is 82 into 10 to the power of plus 3 pi by 2 uh, 50 plus 75 T c is 75 plus 50 W is 40 right. So, eccentricity I think we have to find out sorry we have, I have put in this eccentricity here we can find out right. So, this equation we have got uh, because we know that volumetric is I have just started directly is equal to pi by 2 d c plus d r into w e w e. So, everything is known except e. So, cross multiply. So, e is equal to how much? So, based on that we have got this, right. So, after simplifying this, we get eccentricity as 10.4 10 10 millimeter. So, eccentricity computed is equal to 10.4 millimeter. So, eccentricity for vane pump, right. So, maximum possible displacement. Next, how to calculate maximum possible displacement? Maximum possible displacement. The maximum possible displacement occurs when the eccentricity is maximum. So, maximum velocity. So, maximum displacement e is equal to E max. Now, how to calculate E max? So, I will put it like this V is equal to V p max when E is equal to E max. Got it? So, this is the condition, right? So, how to find out E max? E max can be found out like this E max is equal to DC minus DR, DC minus DC minus DR by 2. So, DC is 75 minus DR is 50 by 2. So, we get eccentricity as 
70 minus 50 is 25, so 12.5. So, E max we get as 12.5 millimeter. So, we have computed the maximum possible eccentricity. Now, let us find out the maximum possible displacement. So, we know the displacement formula V p. So, this time we have to find out maximum is equal to again pi by 2 open the bracket d c plus d r into w e and this time E max. So, we have to modify the equation right, we have to modify the equation. So, please substitute the values once again, you will get pi by 2 into 75 plus 50 w is how much? w is 40, e is how much? Maximum e, do please take maximum e, do not take instantaneous e. So, please take maximum e, e is instantaneous e, is maximum. So, 40 into 12.5, 40 into 12.5, this is very important. Take maximum e, right, 40 into 12.5. So, you get the resultant as 98175 centimeter cube. So, we can make it into centi, sorry, uh, this is millimeter cube, millimeter cube. Let me make it into centimeter cube. So, the answers, you have to make a list of the answers, what you have found out at the end, it is very important. So, answers you get is how much is normal V p, normal uh, sorry normal E, normal E is 10.4 millimeter, maximum E is 12.5 millimeter and uh, you get V is equal to 82 centimeter and you get for this condition V p max you get 98 centimeter. So, this is the answer. This is the systematic way of solving the problem, right. So, you have to proceed in the step by step manner. So, we will continue in the for the next problem. Problem number 5, it is related to gear pump. The statement of the problem it is like this. A gear pump has a 75 millimeter outside diameter, comma 50 mm internal diameter and 25 millimeter width. Will stop. If the volumetric efficiency is 90 percent at rated pressure, comma, what is the corresponding actual flow rate in liters per minute? given the pump speed is 1000 rpm. So, this appeared in one of the VTU examination. Let us try to solve this problem on the board. The given is a gear pump. So, if nothing is given, you assume that it is an external gear pump. So, as you know that you can represent gear pump by two identical gears having same diameters right. So, you can represent like this. So, this is the small line diagram or configuration diagram. So,
So, let us like this, this is in and out, right? Two gears meshing. The di outer diameter and the inner diameter are important, right? So, if I take this as the outer diameter, I take this as the inner diameter. So, width of the gear is W. So, it is rotating at 8000 rpm. So, let us list the known variables. So, outside diameter according to the problem is 75 millimeter, inside is 50 millimeter, inside is 50 millimeter, width of the gear is 25 millimeter and volumetric efficiency is 90 percent, speed of the pump is 1000 rpm. We are supposed to find the actual discharge in this case. So, we know that we have to find out the actual discharge. So, by the definition of volumetric efficiency, we have volumetric efficiency is equal to Q actual by Q theoretical into 100, right. So, here volumetric efficiency is known, Q actual we need to find out and Q theoretical. So, how to find out Q theoretical? Q theoretical to find out Q theoretical, let me call this as equation 1. Let us find out the theoretical discharge. Qt. We know that to find out theoretical discharge Qt, uh, Qt is equal to Vp into n, Vp into n, right. So, theoretical discharge equal to Vp into n, but the volumetric displacement V p for gear pump is given by volumetric displacement by m is equal to pi by 4 d out square minus d in square whole thing multiplied by w. So, you have to calculate V p. So, we will calculate pi by 4 into 75 square minus 50 square into W is 25 millimeter. So, we get that as 61359 millimeter cube, millimeter cube per revolution or we can convert that into centimeter cube by 61.35 centimeter cube per revolution. So, this is V p. So, we can put this V p here right. So, V p is 61.35 into n is 1000 rpm, n is 1000 rpm. So, we get this as 61.3 liters per 
minute. So, 1000 is equal to uh, 1 liter, 1000 meter cube is equal to 1 meter. So, we get 61.3. So, put this value in this equation 1. Substitute Qt in equation 1, we get volumetric efficiency is 90 percent. So, 90 Q actual we have to find out right multiplied by 100 and Q theoretical how much 61.3 right. After simplifying we get the actual as 55.17 liters per minute. Right. So, this is the problem. We can now write down, write down the answers. We can write down the answers. Answers are what V p is equal to 61.35 centimeter cube per revolution. Q theoretical is equal to 61.3 liter per minute, Q actual is equal to 55.17 liter per minute. So, this is the answer. So, this is the solution for this problem. It has appeared in the pre previous year's question paper. So, let us try to solve the next problem. It is problem number 6. A pump has a displacement volume of 98.4 centimeter cube. It delivers 0 0.00152 meter cube per second of oil at 1000 rpm and 70 bars. Full stop. If the prime mover input torque is 124.3 Newton meter, fine. Number 1 what is the overall efficiency of the pump? Number 2, what is the theoretical torque required to operate the pump? So, again this has appeared in the previous year question paper. Let us try to solve this problem on the board. So, let us solve this problem. In this problem, he has not mentioned the type of the pump. So, he simply says pump. So, it is a generic pump. So, we have to solve on the basis of the generalized pump. right? So, given the parameter is just simply you write it is a generalized pump. right? So, what are all the parameters you make the list. right? So, volumetric displacement given is 98.4 centimeter cube per revolution. So, you can make that into meter. So, if you make that into z meter 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 8, 4 meter cube per revolution. Second variable given is actual discharge. Actual discharge is equal to 0 0.00152 meter cube per second pressure is 70 bar is equal to 70 into 10 to the power of plus 5 Newton per meter square. Speed is 1000 rpm, speed is 1000 rpm, actual torque 124.3 Newton meter. What we are supposed to find out is the overall efficiency and as well as the theoretical torque. So, we have to find out these things. right? So, we have to find out the overall efficiency. right? So, we know that for any pump, for any pump, we have the overall efficiency is 
the product of volumetric efficiency into mech efficiency right so this is the in terms of percentage this is how you write so you have to find out the volumetric efficiency as well as the mechanical efficiency now how to find out the volumetric efficiency so volumetric efficiency eta so i will call this as equation 1 so volumetric efficiency is ratio of q actual by q theoretical into 100 right so volumetric efficiency is like this and q theoretical is equal to vp into n so q theoretical is equal to vp into n so we have to solve like this qa or we can take a better this is the better solution let us find out q theoretical is equal to vp into n so vp given is 0.000.0.984 meter cube per second into 1000 rpm right so that is the answer right so you can put this here so it is 84 meter cube per revolution right so q actual q uh, actual is how much q actual 0.00152 and uh, this is 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.984 into 1000 whole thing multiplied by 100. So, after simplifying you get this as 92.7 volumetric efficiency right so now volumetric efficiency has been calculated now mechanical efficiency mechanical efficiency mechanical efficiency eta mech can be calculated by the equation power equation p into q t by 2 pi n t a. So, this is the equation right. So, p is the pressure, q is the theoretical discharge, 2 pi into n is the speed and t, t a is the applied torque. So, we can substitute the values here. So, we can substitute the values p is 70 into 10 to the power of plus y q theoretical is 0.984 into 1000 divided by 2 pi into 1000 into t is 124.3 124.3 so you get mechanical efficiency as 88.2% 88.2% so this is make efficiency now you substitute these two you get in one so substitute so i will i will 
take this here, I will write this here. So, substitute this value, you continue here, right. So, volumetric efficiency is 92.7, mechanical efficiency is 88.2. So, whole thing multiplied by 100, we get the overall efficiency as 81 point eight percent, eighty one point eight percent, right. So, we can, uh, we have to find out the next, the theoretical torque have to find out the theoretical torque, right. So, for that we know that mechanical efficiency in terms of torque, mechanical efficiency in terms of torque is theoretical torque to applied torque, right. So, mechanical efficiency is how much? Mechanical efficiency is, well, we forgot to write the answers, better you you uh, make, uh, we have the answers here. Uh, volumetric efficiency is equal to mechanical efficiency is equal to and uh, overall efficiency. Volumetric efficiency is 92.7 percent, mechanical 88.2 percent, overall 81.8 percent. You write down the answers this is the answer, right. So, me mechanical efficiency is 88.2, T T you have to collect, T applied is 124.3. So, T T is equal to, after cross multiplying we get answer as 109.6, so, the answer is 109.6 Newton meter. So, this is the answers. Volumetric efficiency 92.7, mechanical efficiency 88.2, overall efficiency 81.8 and the sorry this is torque not efficiency, this is torque, this is T T theoretical torque. 109.6 Newton per meter. This is how we need to solve systematically this problem like this. We will move on to the next problem. We move on to the last problem under pump series, problem number 7. The statement of the problem is like this. Find the flow rate in LPM for an axial piston pump delivering at 1200 rpm full stop the pump has 12 comma 15 mm diameter pistons arranged on a 120 mm piston circle diameter the offset is 10 degrees and the volumetric efficiency is 94% so this is away again appeared in the examination let us solve this problem given is axial piston pump. So, you know the axial piston pump how it works, right. So, if you draw the diagram something like this, like this the pump will be there, right. So, the pump uh, let us uh, redraw this little bit.
So, this is the piston. So, this is the piston, right. So, this is the flash plate, this is the axial piston. If you draw the side view, I will draw the side view here, I will draw the side view. So, side view it consists of So, this is the side view. Now, let us find out what are all the information given. So, it is continuously rotating. So, n is 1200 rpm and the pump has 12 15 mm diameter piston. So, number of let us designate 12 and the diameter of each piston is 15 mm diameter, right. So, 15 mm diameter or we can take that 0 0.015 meter, 0 0.015 meter, right. So, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, totally 12 numbers, right. So, each having diameter of the piston is Tp, right. So, this is the piston. Now, the pitch circle diameter. So, this pitch circle diameter D is 120 millimeter. So, this is pitch circle diameter. So, 0.12 meter. So, which is equal to 0.12 meter. 0.12 meter. Along with that, he has given the angle so, angle, this angle he has given. So, that is equal to Q. So, Q is equal to 10 degrees. So, that angle he has given. So, Q is equal to 10 degree. Angle between each cylinder, radial angle, right. And uh, the volumetric efficiency is 94 percent. Volumetric efficiency is 94 percent. And we have to find out the discharge for this pump, right. So, we know that for any axial piston pump, for axial piston pump, we have the discharge Q is equal to D A N Y, Danny. We can remember the, the equation simply Danny, D A N Y, D Danny tan theta volumetric efficiency. Like this, we can multiply Danny tan theta volumetric efficiency. Right. So, substitute the variables in this equation. Right. So, D is 0 0.12. A, how do you calculate A? A is equal to pi d square by 4. Area of the piston. So, A is equal to pi d square by 4. So, how can we find out the area? I will put the area here. A is equal to pi d p square by 4. So, we can directly pi by 4 into what is the 0 0.015 into n is 1200 rpm. 1200 rpm into tan 10 degrees 
tan 10 degrees into volumetric efficiency 0 0.94, 94% or 0 0.94. So, this is the simplification, right. So, you simplify this. Once you simplify this, you get Q as 0 0.015 meter cube per revolution. So, this is the discharge. If you want to express this in terms of uh, liters per minute, you have to multiply that by 1000. So, Q is equal to sorry 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So, 0 0.05 into 1000 right, you get 50 liters per minute, 50 liters per minute. The conversion factor used to convert the meter cube per revolution to liters per minute is 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liters. So, you have to use that 1 meter cube is equal to 1000 liters. So, that is why I have multiplied by that 200 is equal to 1000 liters, right. So, we get that per revolution. So, this actually no, this is in terms of minutes meter cube per minute. So, we are going to convert that meter cube per minute into liters per minute. So, multiply this by 1000 to get liters. So, this is the answers. So, this is a simple problem related to the axial piston pump and finally, you write down the answers as usual. Please do not forget to write the answers. So, answer is directly what? you what you have calculated. So, what all you have calculated that is the answer whether it is required for the main answer not like that. So, what all you have calculated that becomes the answer right. So, I have calculated area etcetera all those things. So, Q is equal to 50 liter per minute is the final answer. So, with this we conclude the problems related to pumps. So, all problems related to pump are simple, straightforward. Only thing is you need to maintain a ready reckoner of all the formulas in a sheet. So, take a sheet, write down all the formulas one below the other and uh, keep it with you. So, that act as a ready reckoner for you for solving the problems. So, this is very easy. So, whenever you try to solve a problem, or a series of problems sometimes you will come across so many formulas. So, how to memorize this formula? One of the best technique is writing down the formula on a sheet of paper raw formulas one below the other and remembering that formula, memorizing that formula again and again and again, right. So, with this I stop and I have concluded the class. This class is exclusively dedicated to problem on pumps.